Hello and welcome to today's course, Building Envelope Fundamentals, Designing with Insulated Metal Panels. My name is David Wandler, Regional Sales Manager for Norbeck for Controlled Environments and Architectural Facades for Ontario and Western Canada. Norbeck is a manufacturer of insulated metal panels who has been in business for over 30 years. New ownership in the last three years has led to many new product enhancements and expansions in production and products and services to our customers. So let's get started on today's presentation. Building envelope fundamentals designing with insulated metal panels. For those that are members of the AI continuing edu uh, education program, we need to read the following slides. Uh, consultants and architects who are members of other associations can still reach out to Norbeck for continuing education credits. So credits earned upon completion of this course will be reported to the AIA CES AIA members. Certificates of completion for both AIA members and non-AI members are available upon request. This course is registered with the AIA CES for continuing professional education. As such, it does not include any content that may be construed or approved or endorsed by any of the AIA construction or any method of manner handling using distribution or dealing with any products. This course is approved by the CBCI for continuing education approval for this course indicates it will be monitored by CBCI to ensure that it upholds the quality, relevance, rigor necessary to contribute to the ongoing learning in knowledge areas relevant to green building industry. Course description. Today we're going to discover how insulated metal panels can help enhance functionality of building performance. You will gain a better understanding of the insulated, insulated metal panels constructability and physical properties and its visual and constructural attributes, efficiencies, advantages and benefits for using IMPs in today's design world. Our learning objectives today will be to discuss the advantages of designing with insulated metal panels, recognize how insulated metal panels can offer the designer a solution for building envelope to resist varied and severe weather conditions, including fire, safety, durability, cost, energy efficiency. We will learn and understand jointed components in insulated metal panels. We will identify cost savings and efficiencies related to IMP installations in today's competitive market. We will identify how insulated metal panels can open up building concept to take advantage of their ability to adapt to existing structures and turnkey buildings. We will discuss how IMPs contribute to earning credits on lead projects. And we'll review some interesting and exciting project profiles where insulated metal panels uh, made a tangible difference to its occupants and its owners. Our table of contents. Uh, first, we're going to review uh, an overview of insulated metal panels. Uh, we're going to talk about insulation. We'll learn about the rain screen in an, insul on an insulated panel. We'll discover steel uh, gauges, profiles, and coatings and finishes available for IMP. We'll look at some inspirational projects, uh, review some installation details, talk about some applications for insulated metal panels. Uh, we'll review insulated metal panel performance testing for cold compliance, and we'll talk about sustainability. What you're looking at on this slide is a panel overview. You'll see that there's a polyurethane core, which is sandwiched between two sheets of galvanized steel. In the top portion, we talked about lamination adhesive. This would be used for mineral fiber panels only. So polyurethane fire panels, non-fire rated, and mineral fiber panels, fire rated panels. What we're looking at now is the manufacturing process for a continuous line for an insulated metal panel. You've got at the beginning two coils of steel, which the bottom coil is going to a preheat furnace. You've got your roll formers for the liner sheet and the roll former for the phase sheet. 
the sheets continue along and you'll see that there's a foaming nozzle which places the foam evenly along the bottom sheet of the steel. The two sheets of steel enter a heating and curing chamber. During the heating and curing chamber process, the foam expands and bonds to the steel. And then you'll see there's a flying saw, which saw cuts the steel panels to the desired length for the project. The panels then uh, exit the line and go to a packaging area. Insulated metal panels are simply rigid urethane foam sandwiched between two sheets of coated metal. The exterior sheet is a waterproof steel panel face. The interior sheet, the vapor barrier, and then the continuous insulation, one of the highest insulating R values in the industry. So we, we're looking at a single component building envelope solution. How do insulated metal panels meet the 10 building envelope fundamentals? So thanks to the intelligent and versatile state-of-the-art technology, continuous panels offer integrated, durable, and aesthetically pleasing solutions for building construction. They're the most cost-effective cladding solution while meeting and even exceeding building code requirements. Again, insulated metal panel is a single building component which provides a humidity barrier, a thermal barrier, a water is water impermeability, ultraviolet screen, resists lateral force, anti-pollution barrier, snow load resistance, is an acoustic barrier, fire resistance, and air barrier. Now a little bit about the chemistry uh, of the foam, uh, polyurethane, which is PER, and polyisocyanurate. These two chemicals are similar, but not the same in formulation. There is a exothermic chemical reaction between the liquid polyol and polymetric isocyanate. Both of these contain polyol isocyanate, a blowing agent, a catalyst, and surfacants. The important part of these products properly performing in an insulated panel line is they must be pre-mixed in temperature controlled tanks. If you recall on the insulated panel line, we were preheating the steel, bottom sheet of the steel. So temperature is important in the manufacturing process. The polyurethane or polyisocyanurate is injected between two faces and bonds. These materials do contain three to 4% recycled materials, for example, plastic bottles. If you look below, you'll see the formula, basic formula for polyurethane or polyiso. So you have your polyol, which is main function as a binding agent, your isocyanate, its basic uh, ingredient for a polymetric chain required to obtain solid foam material. At the end, you end up with a thermoplastic material, which is the insulating core. A little bit more uh, breakdown on the chemistry of polyiso uh, versus polyurethane. You'll see the main difference here is that you've got two times isocyanate in a polyiso versus a polyurethane mix. Again, we'll, you've got an isocyanate and a polyo mixed. They react and create heat and CO2. Heat causes the blowing agent to volatize. The volatized BA and CO2 cause expansion. Meanwhile, the isocyanate and polyur continue to react and polymerize, creating a solid foam. This is the important part here, the bubble. It's the bubble structure which holds the insulating gas that provides the high insulation value in a closed cell structure in a polyurethane or a polyiso foam. The circumvent helps displace the mixture on the surface and the catalyst manages the, the speed reaction. Uh, as you can imagine in an insulated panel manufacturing line, the line is moving slowly so the catalyst in that foam mix is going to be a slow process versus what you get from a building store to foam, say foam a window uh, replacement project at your house. So very important part of the manufacturing process of insulated metal panels. What we're looking at on this slide is panel joints. The first two are vertical joints showing hidden fasteners with clips, very similar looking joints. The panel on the left is a polyiso or polyurethane panel, and the panel on the right is a mineral fiber, which would be a fire-rated panel. 
polyiso being non-fire rated, and then your horizontal joint with a reveal. Insulated metal panels have pressurized equalized rain screen system, which that is is an air cavity which provides a barrier to water and air movement between the panel. You'll see that the rain screen itself is at position one, that's the air cavity. The butyl is factory applied at positions two. And then you're gonna see the foam in contact, which creates a swirl joint, which re creates resistance to infiltration of both air movement between the panel and water moving between the panel. Then you'll see at position three, your fastener with a clip. Position number four, we show a, a structural angle mechanically fastened to the top of the foundation wall. At position five, we show the vapor barrier, which prevents any water movement uh, between the bottom of the panel at the weep hole and into the building. And then you've got your structural foundation and a trim support on the outside with a clip-on fastener with a concealed fastener detail. Let's talk about steel profiles and coatings for IMP. Typical steel profiles available would be a serrated, a silkline profile. You'll see that this profile is vertical on a vertical panel. And in this case, it provides a vertical shadow line on the panel. Then the fluted profile, which is a typical industrial type look. Micro rib profile is a very tight profile. From a distance, this profile can look smooth as, no, as a no profile panel. And then no profile. On this, uh, we're talking about steel thickness and, and texture of insulated metal panels or the thickness of the steel varies 22 gauge to 24 to 26 gauge. Typically panels come, steel comes smooth and then can be embossed. And the industry embossed finish would be referred to as a stucco type finish. The color options for insulated metal panels. You've got SMP, which is a silicone modified polyester, excellent film integrity, and common use for exterior finish. This is a good price quality ratio finish. And then we have a PBDF for a fluoropolymer type finish, which is also referred to as a Kynar type finish. Has excellent color retention, excellent adhesion, and superior UV resistance. An Alternate finish that's offered for interior applications only is a PVC laminate, which is, re, is a product called PVC Advantica. This is for interior applications only. This material has high scratch resistance, high corrosion resistance, excellent color retention, and durability. Other finishes would be PVDF Coastal, and there's also Plastisol finishes, which would be for corrosion environments, for example, in uh, industrial mining. SMP and PVDF finishes are available in standard colors, premium colors, and custom colors. You'll see uh, the classic collection offered by this manufacturer is a series of colors which are offered on 26 gauge material, and then a premium collection which is more architectural type colors which are offered on 22 gauge material. Custom colors would also be available in SMP. Then we're looking at PBDF finishes, the Kynar type finishes, more architectural type finishes, uh, again offered as classic collection as standard colors, and then signature collection as premium colors. Uh, these would be offered on 22 gauge, some on 24 gauge, and also could be offered as custom colors. Then we're talking about on the, you'll see on the far right corner, stainless steel and Advanica L. Those are for interior finishes. The stainless, again, would be uh, in some corrosion environments uh, offered it in, as an alternate to an Advanica L finish. Durability of uh, insulated metal panels. Uh, when you're talking about and thinking about colors on panels, you want to think about total solar reflectance. Basically what we're showing on this screen is we're showing uh, light or sunlight hitting the face of the panel. 
uh, some of this light is going to be absorbed into the panel and some of it will be reflected. It's natural to understand that light colors would be more reflective and darker colors would be less reflective. This is an important factor to consider when uh, looking at uh, manufacturing or designing a project. And the reason is uh, that in selecting colors, you can have issues with oil canning if the, if the panel manufacturing is not properly addressed. Uh, oil canning you'll see is a distortion of steel. In the picture on the right, you'll see some sheet puffiness shown by excessive temperature elevation on the panel. The solution to avoiding oil canning would be to monitor the quality of the steel, uh, likely use higher steel gauge thicknesses, for example, 22 gauge, prone to use lighter colors with low gloss finishes to provide reflection off of the surface. And then we would, as a manufacturer, encourage uh, expansion joints in the panels to reduce uh, the length of the panel to address any issues with oil canning. Another challenge with insulated metal panels is uh, buckling. Uh, this is caused by restriction of steel thermal expansion at the lamination, lamination interface. Again, uh, manufacturers will, in the manufacturing process and design stage, consider introducing profiles to the steel and want to restrict the length of the panels again based on the gauge thickness and colors of the panels desired by, desired by the consultant for the project. Inspiration. Here are some projects that have been done with insulated metal panels. This is a project uh, structure which uh, insulated panels, vertical insulated panels were used for the most of the building. You'll see that the insulated metal panels uh, red at the back are vertical installation of panels. Uh, also used for this project. This is uh, a project Magellan Aerospace in Toronto. Uh, you're looking at horizontal panels installed in this project. You'll see that the corners are factory molded corners with also factory re uh, re release at the joints. So those are also bent at the factory, the vertical joints. This project, uh, if you look closely, you'll see that the insulated metal panels were actually manufactured to width to align the joints with the mullions on the windows. And then at the back, you can faintly see that there's a vertical horizontal, a vertical insulated metal panels, which have an expansion joint. And that is again, to address any issues with oil canning or buckling uh, due to the dark color of the panels. Suprema is a manufacturing facility in Montreal. Again, the consultant utilized vertical insulated metal panels on this project with a silk line profile. Another project showing horizontal insulated metal panels, factory bent corners and trimless ends uh, on this project using multiple colors. We can see how easily the insulated metal panels integrate with the window wall openings on the project. Another project done with horizontal panels. You can see the reveal uh, on the panel, vertical and horizontal, again, with factory bent uh, corners. Uh, the consultant on this project using colors to accent the uh, exterior of the building. This is a distribution warehouse uh, where we're, uh, again, using vertical insulated metal panels along with window openings. Uh, you'll see that uh, on this project, how quickly the panels uh, and the project comes together. A number of different projects that have been done with insulated metal panels, a hydro dam project, you'll see that uh, there's ACM attached to the surface of the vertical insulated panels to create an architectural element. A uh, project at the University of Laval in Montreal where there's horizontal panels installed, multiple colors, Again, that horizontal and vertical reveal. You're looking at a rec center at the top right corner. Uh, this building is showing you different widths of vertical IMP with some architectural elements attached to the building. Again, at the bottom, we're showing you uh, different uh, lengths of, or different widths of panels with different colors. 
And on the Bauer building, we've actually, uh, the consultants used again, vertical panels, but uh, applied a architectural accent line. And that was actually, I believe, painted on or a vinyl material that was attached to the building. This is an interesting project, which is a courthouse in Montreal. Uh, it is a, again, it's a vertical panel installed. You'll see a different uh, depths into the pro into the project, providing some color and also some interesting architectural elements. Another project, a light commercial project done with horizontal IMP. Again, you can see those vertical lines and horizontal lines that match up to create uh, the look of an ACM material. This project is Plas Bell. Uh, it's Montreal Canadiens farm team, AHL farm team. The consultant on this project, as you can see, was looking to use insulated metal panels in a circular shape. You'll see that uh, this was a national engineered and designed solution and was achieved by using different widths of vertical IMP. When we're thinking about insulated metal panels and, we, and walls in general, and we want to validate the energy efficiency of a wall, we want to consider the effect of R value. What we're showing on this slide is a vertical joint cross-section on a vertical insulated metal panels. Again, you'll see that rain screen with the clip. In considering the effect of R value at the joint of this panel, we know that the five inch panel, insulated metal panel has an R value of R35. On this particular slide, you can see that the inside temperature in, evaluating, in evaluating the effect of R value at the joint was 69.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The outside temperature at minus 20.2 degrees. And in calculating the effect of R value, we discovered that the effect of R value at the joint on this panel was R32.6. So if you can imagine a vertical joint on an insulated panel every 42 inches, you can see that the effect of R value is not far, is gonna be over the entire wall, is gonna be very close to the nominal R value of R35. Very high performing uh, wall system. Insulated metal panels are tested for a number of different performance. Uh, one of them we're talking about again is mo moisture management, water and air. And ACSTM E331 is the water uh, movement test that's done. Uh, insulated metal panels ex exceeded the, these testing as you can see by the listed data there. Again, we're showing you on the right, we're showing you the vertical panel with the concealed fastener and the butyl, factory applied butyl at both joints. Installation. Uh, one of the main advantages of insulated metal panels is the ease and speed of construction, being a single component unit. It is a very fast piece of uh, material to install. And you're gonna see this very shortly on a video clip soon. So insulated metal panels, as you can imagine, require less labor and mobile equipment on site. Uh, there's a reduced number of parts uh, that are put together versus a built out wall assembly, which decreases the number of hours required to complete a project. Fat, this faster installation allows the building to be closed off quicker and allow other trades to get in and, and complete their work on the project and minimum maintenance compared to conventional building envelope systems is another benefit of insulated panels. So 40% faster than on-site assembled panels. And now we're going to show you a small clip of insulated panels being installed. You'll see on that clip that there was, it looked like there was some rain coming down. So another benefit of insulated panels uh, is that they can be installed in all weathers and you don't have to worry about any of the insulation getting wet 
and having to dry that out or wondering how that's going to dry out later. That's uh, factors influencing girt spacing. So when we're talking about girt spacing on a, a project for insulated metal panels, we have to consider the geographic location of the project, uh, which would consider the wind loading, other risk factors of the building, the building height, the building width, uh, the building length, uh, category for the openings, uh, the width of the panel that's being used, the thickness of the panel. All these are factors that would determine the girt sizing and spacing on a project. You also see in the little picture there, uh, very important to remember that insulated metal panels or IMP are known non-load bearing cladding. They typically are applied to a building structure, typically steel structure with horizontal girts. However, they can be used for building envelope uh, for restoration projects where you would atta attach uh, an insulated panel, for example, to a load bearing masonry wall, or an existing steel structure. And again, it would be the horizontal girts for the attachment. Here's some installation details, some basic installation details. In the first detail, we're showing uh, insulated metal panel off the top of a foundation. Again, your first anchoring point is that angle iron attached to the top of the concrete wall. In the next clip, we're showing uh, mid girt. Again, uh, clip and concealed fasteners is what we're showing there. And again, in the last one, we're emphasizing the detail for and the need for this factory applied butyl and the concealed fastener on the insulated panel. Wind load affecting uh, on a building is a, a big factor in considering when you're uh, determining girt sizing and spacing for insulated panel projects. In this project, we're showing wind direction, so the windward wall hitting, you'll see that there's a negative pressure at the bottom of the wall and a positive pressure at the top of the wall. As that wind flips to the other side of the building, you'll see that suction, negative pressure at the top and positive pressure at the bottom. This next clip actually shows you uh, the numbers uh, that need to be factored when designing uh, girt spacing and panels for an insulated panel project. So you'll see 31.63 pounds per square foot pressure at the top of the wall and actually minus 28.18 pounds foot pressure at the bottom of the wall. Anchoring materials, typical anchoring materials for insulated panels would be for steel would be a self-tapping tech screw. Again, we're showing you the clip and uh, the steel girt. Uh, insulated panels can be installed on wood structures, so you would have a wood screw uh, using the same clip. What we're really showing in this uh, picture here is the insulated metal panel thickness and the actual tech screws going through the horizontal girt and the amount that they're actually penetrating through the steel there. Uh, this needs to be minimum one half the diameter of the screw. So this is what this we're really showing you there. So again, uh, the screw would, uh, length of the screw would depend on the thickness of the panel, but needs to penetrate at least one half the diameter into the horizontal girt. Here's some details for roof, roof junctions and construction sequence. The first one where you're looking at the insulated metal panel is actually extending beyond the roof and with a plywood attached to the back is actually forming the parapet detail at the top of the roof. In the second detail, we're showing a detail which could be on a retrofit project or also could be done on a new project where you're using a light gauge steel wall with insulation to create the parapet with the IMP extending up and attaching to that structure. The last clip is just showing you a flat roof with no parapet detail. Technical details, uh, some more technical details here for corners. In this specific project, we're throwing, showing you a detail using clips at the outside corner with a flashing which is applied with concealed fasteners. So there's a clip detail. So it's a clip on the corner flashing detail. We talked a lot about horizontal panels. 
um, what you're talking again a picture here we're showing you of factory bent corners so insulated panel manufacturers do provide factory bent corners the detail here we're showing you is the joint the butt joint and vertical reveal in, an, in a horizontal panel and we're showing you the trimless ends that are done and the detail at the structure to support the panel on a horizontal IMP project. Typical applications for insulated metal panels, we've looked at and shown you a bunch of different projects. Of course, manufacturing facilities, uh, exterior and interior uh, IMPs are used on those projects. They're used as well on distribution warehouses, uh, schools, hospitals, religious facilities, aircraft hangars, office buildings, sport complex, many applications for uh, exterior building envelope and also interior applications. IMP performance and testing for code compliance. IMPs are, yes, are tested to meet the performance and testing requirements of the model building codes and insurance listing agencies. They are tested for fire, structural, thermal performance, form core properties, water penetration, and air pressure differential. Here's a list of uh, ASTM uh, standards uh, and FM standards. I'm sure that everybody's familiar with those. We'll move on to the next slide, which shows the testing and standards for US. And you'll see on the side, we're showing you a polyiso sanyard, which is a non-rated panel. And then we're talking about a mineral fiber core panel, which is a fire rated panel. So you'll see that uh, these panels beat ASTM E84. Uh, there's no FM uh, factory mutual uh, approval for a mineral fiber panel. You'll see that the panels both meet ASTM E72, which is structural air infiltration. They both meet or exceed ASTM E283 and ASTM E330. And then thermal performance, ASTM C518, they both meet that standard. And they both meet and are tested for water infiltration, ASTM E331 and AAMA501.1. In Canada, we have the same structural air infiltration and thermal performance and water infiltration all ASTM standards. Again, there's no FM factory mutual for the mineral fiber panels. Uh, different uh, testing for CAN ULC for Fire Canada, uh, CAN ULC S101, S102, and S134, and S138, and S126. So based on the last two slides, what we're showing you is that the panels meet or exceed building code compliance and performance. Sustainability. IMPs create a highly efficient cost-saving green building enclosure. They contribute to a sustainable world by using high-performance and energy-efficient insulated solutions. Lead. Do IMPs uh, contribute to lead? Yes. They perform a thermal, perf high-performing building envelope. They bring huge difference to uh, zero ozone depleting potential. They often, the steel goes into IMPs has been recycled. Nearly all projects requiring low emission green construction come to IMPs for design. Finally, the overall energy efficiency reduces the cost needed to maintain interior environment more than paying for any price difference compared to other building materials. Here's an example of a table of contents for insulated metal panels. Uh, the materials are fire rated insulation, pre-painted galvanized steel, sealant one, sealant two, and the adhesive they're talking about it would be in a mineral fiber panel. Lead credits, potential lead credits uh, for energy and atmosphere, minimum energy performance, yes, IMP contribute. Optimize energy performance, yes, IMP contribute. For materials and resources, again, uh, building product disclosure optimization, sourcing of raw materials, they do contribute. And they also contribute for material ingredients and uh, a document. These documents, so lead documents, along with the health product declaration, are available on manufacturers' websites. 
Insulated metal panels, EPDs, contain valuable information and in product definition, building physics, basic material and its origin, product manufacture processing and use conditions, and life cycle assessment results, testing results, and verifications. Environmental product declarations can help you use sustainable building materials and develop more energy efficient, environmentally responsible buildings. Again, uh, EPDs are available on manufacturers' websites. Recycled content and reuse. Uh, we talked about this uh, already. Uh, steel faces of the insulated metal panels are 42% post-consumer, 27% pre-consumer. Can uh, insulated metal panels be recycled or reused? Yes, they're quite frequently are taken apart and reused uh, within either on an exterior or in an interior environment. Quick review of uh, our presentation today. Uh, we did discuss the advantages of designing with insulated metal panels. We learned to recognize how IMP can offer the designer a solution for the building envelope to resist varied and severe weather conditions, including fire, durability costs, uh, energy efficiency. We learned about and understood joints for insulated metal panels. We identified cost savings and efficiencies related to IMP installation in today's competitive market. We identified how IMPs can open up building concept to take advantage of IMPs easy systems, the physical benefits and their ability to adapt to existing structures and turnkey buildings. We discussed how IMPs contribute to earning credits on lead projects. And we reviewed some interesting and exciting insulated panel projects where we were able to create a tangible difference to the occupants of these buildings, identifying and solving potential issues ahead of time and providing solution-driven options to the design community. If there's any questions, uh, I would take them now. I'd like to thank everybody for their time. You have my contact information. Please reach out if I can be of further assistance. Just wanted to briefly go over some questions that are typically asked by consultants or designers about insulated metal panels. So this one is, comes off quite often. In a vertical panel or horizontal panel, what is the maximum length for an insulated metal panel? Most manufacturers will produce vertical panels to a length of about 52 foot. Again, as we discussed uh, during the presentation, we talked about colors and profiles and how they would impact and widths of panels and thickness of panels, how they would impact lengths of panels. Um, it is possible to produce a panel to the maximum length of 52 foot. It may require a, for example, 24 gauge on the exterior and 26 gauge on the interior and would likely be produced with a light colored panel, SMP type finish with some type of profile. So either a silk line or a micro rib or a fluted profile. Not likely to be produced with no profile at that length. Here's another great question that's asked. Uh, in fire rated panels, what fire ratings are available? So mineral fiber panels are typically produced in four, five, six, and eight inch thickness. Some manufacturers in a four inch panel thickness offer a one hour rating. Others offer a one hour rating in a five inch panel. And six inch panels would be two hours and eight inch panels would be a three hour rating. These panels, would not be produced to a maximum length of 52 foot. They would typically be, be produced at a, about 40 foot. Manufacturers also require on fire rated panels because of the adhesion of the panel versus the bonding between the steel and a polyurethane or a poly iso panel, because they're glued together, they would restrict the profiles available for fire rated panels. These would be typically silk line or micro rib profile. Another great question is what is the thickness of available in poly iso panels? So poly iso panels for most, manu most manufacturers are available in two inch, three inch, four inch and five inch and six inch thickness. So as you can see, a six inch panel is gonna give you an R value of about R42. These panels are also available in various widths as are horizontal panels. 
In the case of horizontal panels, they would only be available in two, or sorry, three, four, and five inch thickness. Hope uh, there's any other questions. Again, you can be free to fill out to me with or reach out to me with an email, and I'd be happy to send you an answer, send you any technical documentation you require, and answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much.